August 25th, 1839, and the sun seldom sets on the British Empire. Captain William Hobson departs Plymouth, England. After four months at sea, he arrives at Port Jackson, Australia. Three weeks later, he sets sail for his final destination. His mission, to make a treaty between the Crown and the native chiefs of New Zealand. February 1840, and New Zealand is currently not a colony of Great Britain. It's home to the native New Zealanders, Tangata Whenua, people of the land, of whom there are approximately 100,000. There are also about 2,000 Tauiwi, foreigners, settlers, whalers, traders and missionaries who live here by the good graces of the local chiefs, who find some advantage in their presence. But with the arrival of Hobson and his treaty, all that could soon change. Heke Pōkai, significant chief of the Ngāpuhi, also known as Hone Heke. He attended the church missionary school at Kirikiri, where he was found to be intelligent and troublesome. From my good friend, Mr. Busby. He rangatira o te kai puke manawa, kore pū. E takuha aroha. My dear friend, I make contact with you again. A warship has arrived with a chief on board sent by the Queen of England to be a governor for us both. Now he suggests that all the chiefs of the Confederation of New Zealand on Wednesday of this Holy Week coming should gather to meet him. From your dear friend, Busby. Heke's wife, Hariata Rongo, daughter of the late, great and fearsome Ngāpuhi chief, Hongi Hika. Okay. He invites me to a meeting in my own land. Excuse me. I can't stop. Ah, hi. I was just wondering if... William Colenso, Church Missionary Society printer and naturalist. Still no word from Busby. The situation has become most urgent. Thank you. Samuel Ironside, Wesleyan missionary. Still no sign. Nothing. What's the man doing in there? There is but two days before the hui, a meeting called to discuss relations between the British Crown and the natives of New Zealand, and to bring about an agreement between the two peoples. But at this rate, it'll be a miracle if there's a treaty at all. James Busby, British resident and representative of the Crown in New Zealand. Until now. In the last seven years, I've done everything I can to bring the civilizing effect of the empire to these poor, ignorant, lawless savages. A man described as having made a full occupation of complaining. I was given neither troops nor any means of enforcing my position in this lawless place. Is His Excellency ready to continue? No, he's still there. He'll disperse. James Stuart Freeman, private secretary to Hobson, recently of Sydney, rumoured brothel owner, once described as the most disgustingly immoral, swindling scoundrel in town. But lovely handwriting, apparently. This really can't wait. Do come in. Your Excellency, on the matter of the treaty, we are most oh. anxious... What's the matter with it? William Hobson, naval officer, the man commissioned to become New Zealand's first governor. And not a well man. He had the most frightful breeze with the ship's captain over a matter of protocol. An argument? Mm, since then. Mm. Can he even speak? Yeah. Sir, the native chiefs are converging. As per instructions, we need the treaty now so that it can be translated in time, otherwise they may leave. It might prove impossible to get them back again. Mm. Is there a draft? Anything? My folio. His folio. Oh. 
briefing from Lord Normandy of the Colonial Office and His Excellency's uh, work in progress. Uh, uh, is this... Um... All? I have been... ill-disposed. Yes. Right. Huh. Then perhaps I might... It may be for the best, sir. Right. Teruki. Another important Ngāpui chief, Teruki, the Duke Kawiti. Ki mai ki a hau, hea tō hia hia. Mōhio ana hone heke mana Ngāpuhi arahi. E tino kaha i kite take. Tēnā pēr te wā kā rongo ia. Ke konei a hau ki te arahi. E hara ki te aru. Nā kia mōhio koutou ko wai, a honehe. Moe atako moe moe a. I u mai a tau iwi, ke tana rau, a hai ai e mātou. Ai, nā hoki kā pou i te ahi. Rere ana te punga rehu ki te takiwa, a tau wana mate ana ngā whenua. I ngaro i te punga rehu. Ngaro whenua, ngaro mana. Tero kōrua. Jack Jones, trader. I jumped ship back in 27 after a disagreement with the ship's captain over a certain pistol. <laughs> Ran smack bang into a bunch of natives who were of a mind to eat me until I showed them the disputed pistol. And then their chief decided I'd better serve as their pet white boy. Set myself up in Kororarika and I haven't looked back. Kororarika described as the hellhole of the Pacific. Yep. Potatoes, pigs, and prostitutes. Them natives, they know the value of trade. And now these bastards have come to ruin it for us. Language, Mr. Jones. Go to hell, your reverend. Henry Williams, Church Missionary Society, known respectfully by the Māori as Four Eyes, the man chosen to translate the treaty. If there's ever to be one. Father to 11 children, a man described as arrogant, stubborn and fearless. Qualities apparently admired by the Tangata Whenua. I have a letter from the Bishop of Australia requesting that I use my influence on the native chiefs to sign. But to do that will require a treaty in a language they can understand. Te <laughs> E tono ki ta arahi a tātou. Kuru te atua i ngā rangi, e harapa te atua katolika. E rewa, e kaitahi ana anō te kainga mata a me wiwi. Me wi. Anā, ko a tai mai te koro kēnei. Tiruki. Heke pokai. Tana haka pono e tino tangata i ea. A moe a nei te tamahine a hongi hika. E pukiriri tonu ana te mauhere i āhau, ka taika here ai āhau ki te rākara. Nā te aha, mahi pēnā koe. Nā te mea, ko au tēnā. Te kau mai iwa te pake. Me e mea, nā ui e kōru, ka patua koe e te hakamā. Ko wā kōrero tēnei. Ko wē hako raru raru. Pachuone and his brother Tāmati Wakanene, 
great warriors, they fought alongside Hongi Hika when he returned from England with his 200 muskets. Ah, there was so much slaughtering, they were gorged with human flesh. It made them sick in the heads and weak. Good day, gentlemen! <laughs> I saw Busby holding this folio aloft as in triumph, and I thought, Lord be praised, it was going to be close, but we can still make it. And when he came ashore, all he had were a few scratchings and some half-baked notions. He is frustrating to the extreme, obstinate, petty, and obsessed with what he perceives as personal slights. Let's not forget, James Busby introduced the grapevine to New Zealand. I was pleasantly surprised to discover he makes a very palatable red. No, 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 plain no, no, no. language. It is a legal document, a treaty with Her Majesty, and as such, will be subject to the judgment of history. I must say, I agree with Mr. Busby. It needs flourish, style, elan. It needs to be understood by the native mind. At this point, I'm thinking even I don't understand it. The instructions from the colonial office were confusing, to say the least. Well, of course, Lord Normanby's brief was somewhat ambiguous. It needs to be capable of flexible interpretation if it is to stand the test of time. In one line, Lord Normanby acknowledges that the natives have sovereignty over New Zealand soil. Mm -hmm. And yet, a few lines later, he suggests that they are incompetent to act or even deliberate in concert. And how is this a problem? He wants them to give their free and intelligent consent to this treaty, and at the same time suggests that they are incapable of such a thing. Well, then, perhaps we should delay this gathering no, of the tribes. No, that's no. not possible. No, we might never get them back. So we should proceed. Oh, there is no alternative. We must complete this treaty tonight. Even so, there won't be time to set it to print. Less than two days to go, and there's still no treaty in English, much less te reo. That's cutting it fine. Head, is it? Big Chief. Aye. <laughs> of course. <laughs> They're all chiefs now. <laughs> Knew of a chief. He used to parade his pretty tattooed heads in front of potential buyers whilst they were still attached to their bodies. They're slaves, you see. He can do what he likes with them. He can still get them to work his gardens till they're sold. And then... <laughs> Well, there's not much you can teach your New Zealander about supply and demand. <laughs> what else you got for me? Yeah, they'll do just fine. Hey, you want to come here? No, it's what can you do? We keep here, get out. Get the poor here, man, here, here, out. Man, out, no, get far. Oh, how am I not here, Tahi? In no yard. The river. Now, me, him, I, we're a move. Get a quay. We're not no guitar. This treaty business. We should talk. Many speak against this treaty. They are suspicious and don't understand. Might you help our cause? I might. The New Zealander's mind is like a fish, difficult to grasp. 
He will say one thing while meaning another, while leaving a third option open in case he wishes, at some late date, to take a completely contrary position. When it comes down to it, the big question is, what's in it for me? Uh, more you, Joseph Moore, take this Wahini to be like a wife to have and to hold for a few weeks until your ship sets sail. A way had to be found to protect the natives from the deprivations of the whites as was an evidence all around with wickedness, perversity, and greed in constant company. So, <laughs> mm. good luck. What is this word? Extension. Extensive. No, 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 that's right. The next, the next word is in is immigration. But not if it's is it not the true purpose of this treaty to allow the rule of law? to protect the natives from the settlers and the settlers from their own lawlessness and depravity. Yes, of course. It is an outcome we all desire. Well, can, can we focus on that? Because... Did they honestly believe that the government of our great empire would go to such lengths to protect a few savages, drunks and whoremongers from themselves? Really? Oh, oh, please! please. Whatever the... Now, we have taken your advice. But now, may I suggest that Mr. Busby and I be left to write, so that the Lieutenant Governor still has time to approve and read this document. And Mr. Williams has time to translate. Yes, yes, of course. Now, Mr. Busby, oh. perhaps another glass of your excellent wine. Wow. I have chased pirates and slave traders across the Indian Ocean. And the yellow fever. Three times, Mr. Busby, no less. <coughs> it's a terrible thing to be laid so low at such a time. Would you like to see it, sir? The treaty, I mean? Well, of course. That's why we're here. <coughs> Perhaps you might, um... Hmm. Good. Yes. Fine handwriting, James. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so the meeting is tomorrow. Good, good. It is still to be translated. What? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, I should probably make a few notes. Hmm? In my uh, chest, if you'd be so kind. You'll find examples of treaties. <coughs> made with the natives of uh, India or... Africa or some such. Perhaps we should compare and contrast. But, sir, surely the conditions here are markedly different. Well, yes, yes. Still, no harm in being thorough. This is it. it needs to be translated by 10 a.m. tomorrow. No, oh, earlier the governor will need to cite it first. Is he familiar with the language? Not a word. <clears throat> I see. Well, there are certain terms which may not be acceptable to a native chief. What sort of terms? Sovereignty. Oh. It is a cornerstone of the treaty. It is asking them to cede their mana. And what is that? Their power, their, their right to rule from their ancestors, but also actions. The governor agreed it was a very fine treaty. Then there is no problem. Here was a document that was to be the bedrock of our relations with the natives. And there was no time for measured contemplation and discussion. New settlers arrive every month, it seems, courtesy of the New Zealand Company. And with them, fresh tensions. Without this treaty, I hesitate not to say that the native population to a man will shortly be in arms. The question of possession may be settled by the extermination of all the Europeans in this part of the island. We're on the lawns of Busby's house. Word is spread, trading ships from the United States, Great Britain, France, Australia, South America and other nations are anchored offshore.
and settlers and locals keep arriving, keen to learn more of the treaty. Oi, you lot. Not over there. Okay. Come on, move it on. Move it on. Loaves and blooming fishes. That's what they want of me. I've had men scouring the countryside for pigs and potatoes. Well, I cannot perform miracles, and the price of everything's gone up with the demand. Feed the natives, they said. Wait, for how long? How many mouths for how many days? It's a complete and utter debacle. You'd think they were a royalty. She's a whore from New South Wales. He's the bastard son of a Manchester miller. <laughs> They'll do well, no doubt. No doubt. But they're saying, if this treaty is signed, we'll have to prove our land was bought fair and square. Aye, but who's to judge? That's what I'd like to know. And what's to stop your native crying foul and selling the same land over again? <laughs> Some of the natives are worried the French are coming. They do have a ship in the harbour. But surely you don't believe they would have any intentions on New Zealand? It might be in the best interests of the natives to let them think so. Here we go. <coughs> Morning, gentlemen. Thank you. <coughs> what an extraordinary hat. I have avoided taking a position on this treaty. Even though the great chief Rewa came to me seeking advice, I told him these things were political matters. My concern was only to feed the souls of men with the word of God. And uh, direct them to the Catholic faith, naturally. Jean-Baptiste Francois Pompelier, first Roman Catholic bishop of New Zealand, known to the natives as Picopo. And yet the heresy, the English missionaries, they make every attempt to undermine our cause. They heap scorn upon the Mother Church, and still, and still we continue to make many, many converts. God is good. We should go inside. It might appear unseemly. We are not the Tsinorangatira. He says that he, Pompelio, is the only companion for the governor. For the sake of our position among the natives, I think perhaps we should go in and come. Hey, Kuei! Make way for the Lieutenant Governor! Make way! Gentlemen, let's take our places immediately behind the governor. This will never do. I will never. Quiet, please! Order! 
Order! Her Majesty Victoria, Queen of Great Britain and Ireland. Queen of Victoria, to Queen of England, my Ireland. Wishing to do good to the chiefs and people of New Zealand. And for the welfare of her subjects living among you, has, has sent me here to this place as governor. But, as the law of England gives no civil powers to Her Majesty out of her dominions, her efforts to do you good will be futile unless you consent. The people of Great Britain are, thank God, free. Tell that to the Irish. <laughs> Silence, Your Excellency. Settle down, Paddy. Free. And as long as they do not transgress the laws, they may go where they please. You have sold them land here and encouraged them to come here. Her Majesty, always ready to protect her subjects, is also always ready to restrain them. I will now read the treaty. OK, some edited highlights. There's a preamble where the Queen explains that since British subjects have settled here, it's her responsibility to get them to behave themselves. But to do that, she needs the rule of law that can only come from setting up a civil government. But that government needs to apply to the native population and her subjects, so they have to sign this treaty. With me so far? Good. So, we go on to Article 1. Ah yes, a bit contentious. In the English version, Her Majesty's asking all the chiefs to cede all the rights and powers of sovereignty. The chiefs are never going to agree to this. The Reverend William said as much. And after some thought, I translated it to Kawanatama. Government or governorship. Which was about as close as I could get and not provoke a walkout by the chiefs. Kawanatama? Who are Okay, the second clause. The chiefs are still chiefs over their lands and treasures. Taonga. Oh, the Finua Tata Iwi. A Tata Taonga, the Reo, a Wahi Tapu. Of course, it'll be their land under the governorship of the British Crown. Article the third, where the Queen graciously bestows on the native New Zealander the same rights and duties of citizenship as the people of England. Tikanga. A tika hatawiwi hatena. Yeah. Or a tika mihinga de. And imparts on them all the rights and privileges of British subjects. Kirunga inga iwi mai. Oingarani. His Excellency now invites you to speak on the subject of the treaty as the just now. Karanga te rangatira, te kawana, maranga mai koeke te korero mo te takeara te manai waitangi kua tu whenane. Kaironga! 
Ja, ora koe te kawana. Health to the old governor. Koe a tāku ki a koe. This is mine to thee. Kare a haue hakaiana, kare rawa! I am not pleased towards thee. I do not wish for thee. To Kemera Kaitiki. Always was a troublemaker and complainer. He was Heke's uncle. A warrior. And a hard man to fathom. I te tonu he matua kia. Ia te tikanga o tōna ingoa. A kaiteke. Ai. E rangatira. E marumana koe. I do not consent to thy staying here in this country. If you stay, then perhaps Te Kemera will be judged uh, and condemned, even hanged by the neck. Oh, no, I know I will never say yes to you staying. You English are not kind to us like other foreigners. So go back. Go back, Governor. I will never say yes to you staying. I will not consent to thy staying. Go. Thank you. Uh, to camera. Kai teke! Translate that one, your reverend. <laughs> uh, uh, next, please. How do you do, Mr. Governor? <laughs> Let my lands be returned to me, which have been stolen by the missionaries. Who will return our lands to us? Uh, I can assure you that uh, all lands unjustly held will be returned. This is good. Baker! Hold on, my Baker! Hold on, my Baker! Oi, translate what the man says. I'm doing my utmost. He said he was robbed of his land. He did not. Sir, are you offering to assist Mr. Williams in his translation? Just recommending he says what they says. Order! It's been suggested you don't fully comprehend the local vernacular. I have no such concerns. You felt competent to translate the treaty? Yeah, assisted by my son Edward, who was raised here amongst the Ngāpuhi. I've always done my very best for these people. My conscience is clear. Order! Land commissioners will examine, will examine into land held by the missionaries as strictly as any other. As any other! The people should recollect, were it not for the missionaries, they would not be here this day, nor be in possession of one foot of land in New Zealand. If any one person has prior claim to land in this country, that person must be the missionary who has labored for so many years in this land when others were afraid to show their noses. I have 11 children. Busy boy! 11 children! And what are they to do when I'm taken from them if they don't have land? Hear, hear! I am happy to say I do own some land. Because after having served the government for 15 years, no provision has been made for myself and my family. And that's all I wanted to say. Really? Well, uh, <coughs> perhaps we should uh, hear from our next uh, chief. Hakarongo pea tato, king rangatira. Well, the problem is a few of the missionaries have taken advantage of their situation. Naturally, the natives are aggrieved. Chief Rewa spoke against the treaty, and he's an important man. So did Wai and Harako. 
And then finally, Cowarty took the floor. We native men do not wish for you to stay. We do not wish to be trodden down. We are free. I will never say yes to you sitting here. Yesterday, I was cursed by a white man. Is, is that straight? The white gives us a pound for a pig. He gives the white four pounds for such a pig. Is that straight? If they would listen to you and obey, then in good. But have they ever listened to Busby? No. No, he's a, he's a man of yesterday. So go back. Be gone. Te pai hoki o te ahu o te tame hei hei. I ronga i te mate ngā Hobson. What did he say? Just traditional greeting. Liar. Me hiki ki ronga. Me tu ku ki rau. To raise up or bring down. Me pēha. Ko tēha. Which is it to be? Ko tēha. Oh. Who knows? The raw one, eh? Noho. Sit, Governor. Noho, my me mata. Stay with us. Me kore kwe. Kame me ham mata, kangaro mata. Tanga ta fenwa. Without you, we natives are nothing. Gone, extinct. Kabe ham mata. What then shall we do? Ko wai mata. Who are we? Ah, te kawana. No ho mai he matua mo mata. Sit, Governor, a father for us. Hey, boy, kai ko nai koe. It is a good thing that you're here. Ah, me te kupu a te atua. It is even as the word of God. No wai te ki me haere koe. Who says that thou shall leave us? Ah, kao. No. Kao re rawa. No, no. Ah, ko i a te wā o te hokorama. But then the the rum sellers. Me te iwi wi wi. And French people. We'll have us natives. No home, mate. Remain. No home, mate. Remain you. Sit you. With the missionaries. All is one. We natives are children. Yes, mere children. It is for you, our fathers. You missionaries to decide what it shall be. We are only natives. Sit, a father, and a governor for us. <laughs> <laughs> it was a noble and most gracious speech. I've known Hone Heke since he was a cheeky and troublesome lad at the mission school. But he's grown into manhood well. Na, Titiro! Kakite koe yo tawiwi! Oh, eh, hari, eh, rawe anna i toku karanga! Ai, tata tsiku anna kawuchi te pukuriri! Kote hakaro o heke! E take noe o te take kei mui a tātou. Hei kara fiu fiu māna i te taki wā. A te wā.
Is not the land already gone? Is it not covered with foreigners? What do you say? Governor, go back. I'm sick. I'm dead. I am killed by you. Had you spoken thus in the old times when the, when the grog sellers and the traders first came? Did you turned them right away. Then you could say to the governor, go back. But you sold your land. Drunk their rum. Bought their guns. Now as things are. Oh, Governor Sid. Go. Ko tamati wakanene ki ana. I tamati wakanene say to thee. No mai to mato matua ite rongo. Stay thou our friend, our father. He kawan. Our governor. A moving and convincing speech. These really are of a most noble race. Ah, me anoa ka chiko a nene ka patero mai a patsuwa ne te tsuakana. Me ranga tira. Yahara to kupu ma ku imu nga ranga tira e nga iwi e rua tanga tawe nawa me tau iwi. Shall I say on this great occasion in the presence of all those great chiefs of both countries? A point of interest: these chiefs are not just brothers connected by blood; they're also connected by this man. Last year, I baptized Nene. And just ten days ago, it was the turn of his older brother, Patswane, to be washed clean of sin. Indeed, I believe this may help our cause. This is my word to you, O Governor. Noho. Noho mai. Sid, stay thou. And to the missionaries, and the word of God. That the French have us not. That Picopo, that bad man, have us not. Remain governor. Na kitakutima. We shall see. We shall see. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. Kyora. Now, I think perhaps we might Ka! take. Ka! No, wait, the king, no, hold my. Eh, hook, hide it. Eh, hook, he keeps Says thou shalt stay. Return to thine own land. There, now. Go here, go down the hoy. Besides, where are thou to dwell? Ka, he, he, Fenwa, go at toy, mo, go to. No place left for thee, and my land is all gone. Shall I be thus? Thus? Come, speak up. Shall I be like this? <laughs> How do you do, eh, Governor? <laughs> How do you do, eh, Mr. Governor? <laughs> Very nice to meet you, Mr. Governor. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Please! Hang on, what's just happened here? Honeheke's uncle has spoken against the treaty and upset the English. But why? Uh, thank you all for your thoughts and uh, vigorous contribution to the uh, discussion. And the next meeting, sir. Yes, uh, two days hence, uh, Friday, 
the 7th instant at 10 a.m. This meeting shall be reassembled. Three cheers for Governor Hobson. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip! Those stupid bastards. They've been played by Hecke, and they don't even know it. Hooray! Tobacco for everyone! Hooray! The Chiefs! No. He means tobacco for the Chiefs only! What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Honestly. Sometimes that man only opens his mouth to change feet. There'll be a right old cock up here today if the treaty doesn't get signed. Because some old chief has got the hump about his share. Don't you come crying to me. Well, I think that all went rather well. Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Right. Do you think well. it wise to wait until the day after tomorrow for signing? Surely they need time to discuss it? Well, certainly. And they're certainly but... fond of talking. <laughs> of course. In God's name. A toe hunger, sir. A local holy man. Would you direct him towards the Tibet? No, 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 pray. Let him approach. What does he say? Uh, nothing of any importance, sir. Very Mr. Colenso, tell me the exact meaning of his words. I'm much ravished to know all. He, uh, he said, alas, an old man, he will soon be, uh, dead. Right. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Colenso. Are we waiting for no, anyone? No, no, sir. I right. should, um, board the... Did rather dampen proceedings. Naturally, some were concerned it was a bad portent, but nothing as serious as the tobacco crisis. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> E mahara ke ana ke te wiri wiri tonu te hunga pa ke ai roto i ora te hu i te mataku i a kau i te ranga tira. O mana i ora te hu i te mitinga i te are ro hone heke. Kundu i te pariate tai. Kare rau tai te huri. E tamariki no i ho mata. Oh, te kau na no ho mai he matua. Mara mataku tu. Mr. Hobson has requested a fresh copy of the treaty. I'm with room for all the native signatures. Well, I wish I shared his optimism. The chiefs are still debating the treaty. And I cannot say which way it will go. Do you think they will even stay for another two full days? Go 
God's will be done. What we are here to do God's will as best we can. so, who's thirsty then? Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, as the warm, balmy night of the 5th of February fell, the real business of lobbying, discussion and deal-making got underway. On this score, at least, there can be little doubt that Pākehā and Māori understood each other perfectly. <laughs> So you must come immediately. Pray tell me why I must come immediately. The natives are leaving. Hmm? What day is it? Thursday, sir. The next meeting is not scheduled until tomorrow. The natives have decided otherwise. Decided? But this is preposterous. Yes, sir. Nevertheless. My uniform. Uh, find my cabin boy. He took it away to have it cleaned. There is no time. But really? Just bring your hat, sir. The natives like your hat. Well, I suppose. It's a very nice hat, sir. Well, I awoke to find some chiefs had already departed and more were planning to do so. Hey, <laughs> it was a right old mess. All the natives taken off, only a handful of whites turning up. Some had grievances over the sharing of tobacco. Can it just be that? Can it? Well, a message was sent to the Herald in haste, informing the governor of the gravity of the situation. But somehow, the first message did not get through. Eventually, a boat was found and a messenger dispatched. I hear Mr. Hobson was a bit upset. He only had time to put on his civilian clothes. But at least he had his hat. Take your places, please. Move it along. Hurry up now. His Excellency is about to speak. Order! Half the savages had left already. Hobson must have been soiling himself. He knew that if the chiefs don't sign here today, he will never be governor. Greetings. Thank you all for coming. no my haremai. This is a momentous day indeed. Ai, e noho puku ana. Tēnā koutou i haramai nei ki tā mātou hui. Now, I can only accept signatures this day. I cannot allow any discussion, uh, this not being a regular public meeting. E hara tēnā e te hui tika. Bonjour, Papa. Bonjour. 
The man knows how to make an entrance. I'll give him that. In my opinion, the papist had no right to be there. But Hobson was accommodating. The bishop has requested that it be publicly stated to the natives that free toleration will be allowed in matters of faith. I could scarce believe what was being asked of me. Hobson was angling for support from the Catholic natives to shore up his own position. Perhaps the man has more intelligence than I give him credit for. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Are you certain you can do this, sir? Yes. I really think it's rather a gentleman and a cheese. We were losing them. So I quickly suggested a compromise, and I helped Mr. Williams write it out. It became, in effect, the fourth article of the treaty. Yes. Yes, I suppose it did. Me ana te kawan. O nga haka pono kato o ingarani. O nga weteriana o Roma. Me te rite nga Maori hoki. E tiaki nga tahitia e ia. Yes, I added the clause about respect to Maori custom. You thought that was important? Yes. But I didn't want Pompalio to think he'd won the day entirely. Oh, we ko maranga tapi hope we we ka haire. E hara i te tangata pai hai mai pakanga. I had no desire to be associated in the minds of the natives with English politics or this treaty. My concern, as always, is the kingdom of heaven. I believe we're now ready to commence with the signing. The wa mo te hai. If you could uh, make your way in the hakawate, in an orderly fashion. Te hara tono at. At which point I'm thinking, oh no, all that work and the savages are not going to play the game. Honestly, I had no idea. Or as the good book says, God helps those who help themselves. Sir, I am convinced that a great many of the natives have no real idea of what they're signing. Perhaps it could be explained more clearly to constitute its legality. The best answer to your concerns lies in the fine speech given yesterday by this very man about to sign. He said the native mind cannot comprehend these things. I must take the advice of the missionaries. But Hobson wasn't taking our advice now. I sign this note with my hand. Mate mano aku tupuna kaharo. With the manner of my ancestors, kaharo. Akau te afa. Akau te afa. Which is Hickey's way of letting the other chiefs know he was the man and had the ancestry to prove it. Ai, irunga rawa taku ingo. O miri hu heiraro mai, mai hu korata. 
he iwi tahi tato. <laughs> yes, well, I, I had Williams coach me on how to say that. Uh, uh, just, uh, just a nice touch, I thought. Mm. Let's take a moment to consider the enormity of what's just occurred. Heke Pōkai, also known as Hone Heke, has now attached his considerable mana to the signing of this document. If the other chiefs sign, it could look as though they're following Heke. If they refuse, Heke might control trade with the English. an appalling sight. That naked savage carrying on, undermining the dignity of the whole occasion. <laughs> the look on Hobson's face. I feared he might have apoplexy right there on the spot. I was quite clear there were to be no more speeches. So perhaps we should just continue oh, something. Yes, sir, indeed. Uh, the next to sign, please. Next! <laughs> <laughs> Step forth, if you please, sir. Tomati Pukatutu. Rewa. E kiana te piho pa te rā tātou a tangata whenua. Hei winiho, ka tūranga tira tātou ki raru i a wiwi. E tai ai ngā kaureka reka nei. Kaore <laughs> The camera. Tomati Wakanene. Te hai. Koe a tonu taku hia hia e painga te tiriti mo tangata whenua, mo tata. Ngā tata wa no tātou whenua, te taku tai moana, ngā wairere me ngā taonga maha e tiaki. Kā re he aha ki a hone heke. Te rangatira kwa mau ki te reo o tauiwi. Ko ia te rangatira o te ao hokohoko. Ko ia te rangatira whai mana. Ko ngā pūriri o tai a mai ngā rūkau kwa rua ki nye rātau ki nuna pēmane. Will somebody do something about that man? Mokoa kei tā tā mai wheruke. Marupo! Hey, Iwi, Tahi, Tato. How do you do, Mr. Governor? <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? Are there any more chiefs who wish to make their mark? Then I think that's enough for today. 
Mr. Freeman? Yes, sir. Uh, please make your way to the store tent to collect your blankets and tobacco. Okay, the parakete, two big No, no, Hip, hip! No! Hip, hip! 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 Ki runga ake i tērā hone heke. Well, that's it then. Hunter's gone to hell in a handcart. These natives have no idea what they're in for. Good for business, no doubt. Hey, lad. How would you like to meet a genuine Maori princess? Well, gentlemen, good day's work. Good day's work indeed. My wife inquired if you would care to join us to dinner. I'd be delighted, old chap. But arrangements aboard ship have already been made. Another time. Ah, Mr. Colenso. Perhaps you would be so kind as to assist my officer in the fair distribution of blankets and remaining tobacco. At least Colenso got his wish to print the treaty in Te Reo. And the treaty to Te Riti o Waitangi began its long journey around New Zealand and through history to become our nation's founding document. A document thrown together in a slapdash, last minute, maybe even quintessentially Kiwi kind of way. A treaty that continues to grow in mana thanks to the efforts of its champions, Tangata Whenua and Pākehā alike. In the end, about 542 chiefs signed. Many did not, but that didn't matter to Hobson or the Colonial Office. As far as they were concerned, New Zealand was now a British colony. In time, some Pākehā and even a few Māori will say that the chiefs signed away their birthright for two scarlet blankets and some tobacco. <laughs> And they are very good blankets. <laughs> the Tohunga was right. Less than two years after the signing of the treaty, Governor Hobson was dead, leaving Britain's most recent colony in a little bit of a mess. But that's another story.